Okay, calling all geeks, all statisticians, all people who love their numbers. If you love your numbers, you're going to want to stick around for this next video because this video is all about the numbers. It's all about the numbers in real estate. It's all about what needs to be done, where we're at, what's good for you if you're a seller, what's good for you if you're a buyer. If you love your numbers, stick around. I'm going to be right back with some really great market updates. Yeah. And welcome back. So first of all, if you get any value out of this video, do me a favor, um, click like on the video, of course, and don't do this till the end. Don't do this until you actually know that you have, you know, gotten some value of it. But do me a favor, click like on the video, subscribe, and then turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of our content that we're creating right now. Now, today's video is all about the numbers, the numbers, the numbers, the numbers, the numbers. I love numbers. Stats just drive me like wild in a really weird way, probably just a little bit creepy, but I absolutely love numbers. So let's talk a little bit about the numbers. So today we're going to talk about the numbers for Racine. I have all the numbers for Mount Pleasant and Caledonia. So if you live in Mount Pleasant or Caledonia, just give us a call. Uh, you can call me at 262-676-2383, or you can send me an email at Kimberly at TAMTHomes.com. I will put that those links in the description below so that you know how to get a hold of us. But if you want the numbers, from Mount Pleasant in Caledonia. We are happy to provide those for you. We just don't have time on a video. And quite frankly, so we're just doing the city of Racine, but we've got, and, and if you want sort of it, we can get those pretty quickly. So, um, or wind point or any other areas around here, that's not hard to get. It's just what we keep track of. And what we do all the time is the city of Racine. And that's what our charts are going to talk about today is city of Racine and where things are going in our market. So let's get into it. So first of all, let's take a look at the very first chart that we're going to look at here, which is list to sold prices. Now, this is really important for you to understand and to get because the list to sold prices, first of all, you can see that the average sold price in Racine was between 200 and 205. In fact, if I go to my other chart here on the iPad, I can tell you exactly what it was then. Um, it was actually 202,678 in August, 203,630 in September, 193,560 in October, and 197,680. Those are the list prices, okay? Not the solds. What's interesting though is that the sold prices for August was 186,426. Uh, for September, it was 199,058. So a little bump up. And that's why you'll see on the chart, those two numbers are kind of matched up really close to each other. Um, so you'll see that very obviously on the chart here, on the chart here, <laughs> I guess I should say, because it's right there over that shoulder. Um, in October, we actually see where our list prices, people brought their list prices down to 193,560. So that's why, again, now you're seeing that the sale prices kind of jumped above them to 195,738. But it's relevant because people were lower were lowering their list prices not because the properties were becoming less valuable they just were getting more reasonable and more in line with the market on list price then in november people seemed to get some more confidence maybe because the interest rates dropped and people thought maybe people would you know buy more houses because of it because our average list price in november was 197680 but our average sold price was only 18250 which is the lowest it has been in the last four months. So if the four months that we're covering here today, and quite frankly, it's the lowest it's been this year that I'm aware of. Um, I just don't have that whole annual chart up here. But that is, those are really interesting numbers. So let's take a look at the next chart though. The next chart here is the sale to list year on year. And what the sale to list year on year um, means is that it kind of tells us not just the list prices to sold prices, but it tells us the sold prices based on last year. So the blue is this year, 2023, and the orange is last year in 2022. And you can see that actually the sold to list prices last year were lower, even though at least from August to November, because it's the same timeline of the other, even though it seems like 
things were going so much higher, they weren't. The list prices and the sale prices were actually lower. The The whole overall uh, production of that was a lower percentage than this year. So what's happening is it's not so much that people are actually selling their houses for more money in 2023. What this chart demonstrates is just that people are becoming more reasonable when they're listing their property. They're recognizing that the market is in a little bit of a downturn. It's not in a slump by any, may, by any way, shape or form, but it is in a more of a downturn in that prices are going a little bit lower than they were. Um, last year in relationship. And so when people list their house, houses more rationally to what sale prices are, then these percentages actually equal out. So what it means is we're actually getting more reasonable sellers. That's what that chart actually shows you is that our sellers are becoming much more reasonable and rational on their list prices. Unlike in 2020 and, um, and 2021, when it just seemed like list prices were just out the window crazy. All right, so here's the other thing. Um, so the next chart I'm gonna show you here, we're gonna talk about the other thing that is really good for buyers. Um, to be honest with you, sellers, you're still in a really good position to sell. You're not really having to lower your prices that much. We're talking about on a $200,000 property, we're talking about you have to lower your price maybe 10,000. So it's not like you're losing out $50,000 or anything like that. You're losing, not losing, but you're just getting about, you know, 5% less than maybe what you had expected. But what's really good for buyers is this next set of slides that I'm going to show you. So this next set of slides is all about the way that properties are coming. So the average days on market is this first one. So this is how many days on market. So the blue is this year for 2023. The orange is last year at the same time. So if this same time last year, houses were actually staying on the market longer than they are now, but not significantly. Because if you notice this, it's really about 23, 24 from last year. And this year, it's about 15, 14 days, something like that. So it's like 14 days versus 24. That's still really, really fast sales for the average house. Now keep in mind that there are some houses that sit out there for six months and don't sell or haven't sold until like five months in. We still have those anomalies, those outliers, which also means we have stuff on the other end. So really, if you're being a realistic seller and you're listing your house in a realistic price range, then, well, you're probably looking at uh, uh, days on market at around seven days, possibly. So which means don't panic if you don't get an offer on that first weekend. Give your agent a weekend or two or maybe even three, because it might just mean that your buyer just hasn't come the buyer that's supposed to buy your house just hasn't come along. And buyers are taking a little bit more time. However, and here's a really cool thing we want to look at. All right. The from August to November, there are more new listings and less of them are being sold. Now, that doesn't mean that sellers, you have to panic because you don't need to panic. Really, truly, don't panic. It's not a problem because even though it is, it's actually a good thing because it means that people, the quality homes like yours are actually going to stand out amongst these and that's an awesome thing. So what this does mean though, what this really does mean is that you need to pay attention because it means that buyers, you have a little bit more time to look at this. So let's look at our last slide here and I'll demonstrate this. This is what we refer to as the absorption rate. And the absorption rate basically says how many months of inventory is there? Like if we had no new listings come in the month of December, how long would we last before we'd run out of listings? And the absorption rate right now is creeping up a little bit. If you notice on this chart, this is back in August, there was less than one month of supply. Literally, less than one month it would take us to run out of houses to sell. The next month up, September, we crept up and our absorption rate for this year was about one month of supply. That's awesome. Now you can see that for October, our absorption rate jumped to over to basically 1.3 for our absorption rate. And we held there in November, which is awesome. Because if you look at the rates for 2022, the absorption rate for 2022, it 
it was actually going down again, which is not the area we want it to go. We want absorption rates to go up if we want to have a healthy, balanced market again. So if we want to make it equally good for buyers and sellers to buy and sell, really three months would be an awesome number for us to be at. So let's hope this number keeps trending up because trending up is good. Now, I do think that one of the things that might help this trend down, and when we get to January, we'll take a look at this, but one of the things that might get these numbers to trend down a little bit is the fact that um, interest rates have dropped. So late November, interest rates dropped. And most of the people who are going to take advantage of that will be buying in December. And if you are thinking about buying next spring, try, try very hard to be ready to buy now. Interest rates have dropped and we've been told by the Fed that they're going to drop at least one more time, probably in January, February, somewhere in that range. So if you are looking to buy, January, February is really when you want to be hitting the market. So get those pre-approvals together right now. Let's get you into a house ASAP. Oh, I should mention that there is $10,000 out there to help you with down payment closing costs if you're a first time home buyer. And if you are not a first time home buyer, your prices, if you have a house to sell, your prices that you're getting for your house are still really good. We still would recommend that you do a package loan where you can pull out the equity and buy first and then sell after because absorption rates are still only at 1.3. You're still going to sell your house and you're going to sell it quickly. So that's a good thing. Um, and we don't want you to be, we don't want you to put your house on the market and be left homeless. That, that's not good at all. So yeah, so that's really, really important to be paying attention to because, because I think January and February are actually going to be some really hot months in the market. Um, and it's just because of the stats. And when things trend up in one direction, then they trend up in other directions as well. So house prices have come down a little bit, 180 in November, and interest rates have come down. That means houses are more affordable for buyers. Now, what will happen possibly, interest rates come down, um, interest rates come down, house prices drop a little bit. Well, what that really means also is that, um, well, it does mean that there's going to be more buyers coming out of the woodwork. So people see that trend. Some people like to wait for those trends to happen three to four months before they move. So if you're a really savvy buyer right now, you want to be making that move now, not waiting three or four months because waiting three or four months, it has been such a volatile market in the last three years. We have no idea where it's going to be in three months. I know where it is now. I know where the trends are now. So now is the time if you want to make a move because interest rates are not going to go back down to three. Let's not even, let's not even kid ourselves. Don't in any way, shape or form think that interest rates are dropping back down to 3% at any time. Maybe not ever, but definitely not in the next five to 10 years. That's not going to happen. What you need to pay attention to is when they get to five or six, which is a really affordable rate for it to be at the five or six level, if that's where you're listed right now, that's where your credit falls that you can get an interest at five to 6%. That's a really solid. And with house prices coming down, that makes houses affordable. So if you're looking to buy right now, that's the trend. Look at those absorption rates. We've got more inventory. We're listing more homes than we're selling, which is good overall for a healthier market and buyers, your interest rates have come down and the prices of houses have come down just a little bit, not a ton, 5%, but heck, I'll take a 5% savings. I'll take a 5% coupon anywhere I go. Don't know about you, but definitely I'm going to take a 5% coupon. Anyway, um, hopefully this has helped you today and hopefully you understand a little bit more about the stats of real estate and absorption rates. If you are anywhere in the southeastern Wisconsin area and you want to know the stats for your particular town or a town that you're considering buying in, just send us an email. Send me an email at Kimberly at TIMTHomes.com or you can call us or text us at 262-676-2383 and I'll be happy to shoot those numbers out to you and get you the information that you need. But otherwise... Have a great day and have a great Christmas season. Bye for now.